comics at the biggest and hottest cons. Now I'm busting out my personal collection of comics, toys, games, and more in order to bring the fun and excitement of con life right to your screen. There's only one place to get your comics and collectibles and chat live with the greatest showman in modern comics. So bust out your keyboard and get ready to... Call it in! You're watching Kicking It With Omni, the live shopping show. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Kicking It With Omni, the live shopping show. I am your host, Henri Kumpen. For all of my Christian friends... I want to wish you a, a happy Easter this weekend. I know tomorrow is Easter for all you guys. So I don't celebrate Easter because I'm Jewish. So Jewish people, don't, uh, we, don't, we don't celebrate that. We celebrate Passover. We like passing over. Oh, Anna wants to say hi. Want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Okay. Cool. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Wow, that's a very nice thing of you to say. Look at that. This kid deserves a round of applause. All right. So... We're hanging out uh, this afternoon to showcase some fun comics with you guys. And uh, before we begin here, I just want to thank everyone because um, the last couple weeks have been pretty stressful uh, in between, uh, you know, getting through this convention, getting everything ready for our Kickstarter and these awards that we have now made, uh, you know, uh, that we've now gotten from being uh, one of 120 contestants to down to eight. And we'll find out on Monday if we make it into the final four. And after that, there's going to be a championship. And then uh, the People's Choice Award for the Heroic Awards will be determined. And I have a strong feeling that Warline can take this win. And I want to thank you guys. The only reason why we can do that is because of you and um, all of you guys for voting so far. So I'm going to drop that link real quick. And then, um, you know, at the at the same time, we have uh, a Kickstarter that's going to be launching next Tuesday. Um, so be on the lookout for that. This is uh, for my book about my grandfather's life. It's called Marks. I'm going to drop the links right now and I'm going to air the trailer real quick and then we'll get to comics. Again. Give me just one second here. So just hang tight while we wait for this room to fill up. I'll drop in that link. everything for it. I was pleased at how much was done right the first time with it. 
uh, I think my grandfather himself would have been really happy about that. You know, when it comes to books like Yi Shin, there's like endless tweaking and needling and everything, even with Warline, it sometimes feels like that. But it's nice when you can go back um, and look at something you wrote, you know, years ago and say, hey, I got it right. And um, the opportunity to get the cover redesigned by Fabrice was just sort of like uh, perfect timing, I want to say. And um, I'm really pleased with the art he did for the for the cover of the book. We're going to get a banner of it and, and use that just because the symbology is so strong for it. But this campaign is going to be really simple. Um, there's not going to be a lot of like rewards on the campaign. It's mainly just the book in digital format and physical format. And then we have some copies left of the first printing, which has a different cover and a different subtitle. It was called uh, Marks a Tale of Neglect. So we just changed it around a couple of things, but uh, it's the same story. And um, But we're, we're just kind of, I'm breaking up uh, each Kickstarter this year to focus on each individual property in your book. So uh, with Marks, we're just keeping everything Marks centric and um, we're just doing a 20, day, a 20 day campaign on this. I am flying at uh, the, 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 the seat of my from the seat of my pants, is that is that what it is? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm I'm about to jump off a cliff and hope that I have wings and, and can and can fly off into the sunset. So um, I'm hoping you guys will join me in and and uh, and bringing this book to life. Um, it already has life, but we're going to give it new life, and um, I really hope you guys will be here for it. So this is going to be a, a great experience. And for uh, there are many people who recently started shopping with me that uh, you know haven't heard of Marks because the book's been out of print for uh, two years now. So it's kind of nice that we're bringing it back, but we're also reintroducing the book too. And I'm really excited about uh, what we're going to do with this book in the future. I have a feeling it's going to be very successful, not just at conventions, but um, we're going to be trying to get it into libraries throughout the nation. And it all starts with this Kickstarter. So we really need your help with uh, bringing this book to life. So I hope you'll be here for the Kickstarter. We'll launch on Tuesday. Um, we're going to have a great show on the experience on Tuesday night as well. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff planned for you next week. And I'm sort of like, I'm, I'm, I'm still a little like, oh my God, I can't believe this is about to happen. Because when it comes to doing Kickstarters, you're planning this stuff for months. And when finally everything starts coming together, it's almost kind of like this shock, like, oh my God, it's it's finally here. And I'm like, it's April already? This is so weird. This year has just been flying. But anyway, I uh, thank you all for being here this afternoon. I hope you guys are uh, in uh, good spirits and everything is good with you guys. So if you spend 25 bucks with me, you get to spin the wheel. You're gonna win something no matter what. You spend 50 bucks with me, you get free shipping on your orders, so long as you're located within the good old fashioned United States of America. All right, we're going to kick it off with our first book this afternoon, which was a remaining FOMO book from our Thursday night show. The first book we have for sale this afternoon is Superman Hell Number One. This is going to go for just $4 right now. It's a really cool lenticular 3D cover. You look at it and it's like his hands are coming out at you. Those rays are shooting at you. It's really cool. The next book I have here is Parasite number one. This is uh, Superman 23.4. And once again, it looks like Parasite's coming right at us. Really cool cover. I love lenticulars. This is going to go for just four bucks, four dollars tonight. And the next book I have here is Brainiac number one. This is Superman 23.2. And we can see Brainiac on the cover. And again, it's like a 3D effect cover here. This is going to go for just $4, four bucks on this. So last night I was on um, this show called The Creative Cranium um, with a bunch of, uh, or not a bunch, just two other retailers. Uh, it was the owner of AA Comics and um, Uncle, was it Uncle Bob's or Uncle Joe's? I got to check real quick. I'm sorry. Uncle Bob's uh, Vintage Toy Store. And, you know, all of us are resellers, but, uh, you know, the first two guys have their own storefronts. So I don't have a storefront, but I have set up shop many times at conventions and things like that. Like I've worked in retail a long time. So I, I, I know what the, I know what the, what the game is. And it was really interesting, uh, you know, talking with these guys and I was not brought on for the same reasons that they were brought on. Actually, I was talking with the show host to me, 
uh, Tim Fling. And this dude is making waves in the industry. Like, not only is his work really gorgeous, like, uh, if you guys backed the Warline campaign last year, I believe uh, I did a giveaway, and some of Timmy's, uh, Tim's books were in there. I was, any friend I have, I always call him, that's Tim, I always call him Timmy. I'm sorry, I shouldn't do that. Tim Fling's books, uh, uh, you know, I gave them away, and they're, they're really fantastic in digital format. So, uh, you know, if, uh, we might do some giveaways with Marks once we hit certain, you know, levels and stuff. So I'll, I'll be talking with him again and give you guys a chance to experience some of his work. But aside from that, he puts these really great shows together where he brings on different people from the comics community to discuss very specific topics. And he finds very specific people for those, you know, for those events. So it was really nice uh, coming together with, with other retailers. And the one thing I got to say, um, I feel like, for the most part, a lot of comic shops believe in the camaraderie of this business because they're truly on the front lines. Um, and I've never had a problem with a retailer in my entire life. I've always gotten along very well with them because um, they're men of the people, men and women of the people. You know, like they are supposed to, you know, create an environment that people want to be a part of. And um, talking with these guys and, and hearing their philosophies of what's important about having a successful business in this, uh, you know, industry is was really interesting and, and how much of it aligned with my own ideas, you know, and the main thing that, you know, AA Comics was talking about was customer service. And I totally, you know, agree with that. That is the culmination of everything that's going to be that is the lifeblood of any of any business, but particularly this business. So just it, it made me it made me get a little emotional because I'm like, you know what? You know, I got people who spend the time out of their day. You guys could be doing anything right now. You could be watching TV shows. You could be playing video games. You could be spending time with your family. But no, you guys have made a commitment to be here for me. And that means so much to me, especially as I've seen our viewership just going up higher than it's ever been before. I really, really appreciate that more than anything. First and foremost, thank you for just simply being here. Even if you're sick, like Tori is. Tori, thank you for being here, even though you're you're sick and should probably be resting. <laughs> thank you for being in front of your computer and and watching me right now. That means a lot. What's up, Heath? How you doing? Well, I appreciate it. Stay as long as you like. You know you're always welcome here. All right. So the next book we have for sale is Vampverse issue one. This is going to go for four bucks. I had it priced at five. I'm not going to down the four. Now it's just got to move. And then I got this Spider-Man number one variant. This is a Humberto Ramos cover. I'm not sure who Spider-Man's fighting here, but this is going to go for just four bucks for anybody who's interested. What do you think he's fighting here? What does that look like to you? Oh, I think that's um. What do you think that is? Hey, Lorena. Wow, really? Chris, thank you so much. Say hi to your mom for me, too. You know, that's another thing uh, about you guys that I think is so fantastic. Um, apparently, I'm not just a part of your lives. I'm a part of the people who matter to you as well. And some of you guys have gotten your family to start watching our show. I know Chris Dysko has had sent me tons of videos of his kids, like, uh, you know, <laughs> reacting certain moments in our show. Uh, and, and all this stuff, it, it means so much to me. You know, just <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate your enthusiasm and your your uh, your support of me. That means a lot. And uh, I haven't read Duke four yet. I still have to read Duke three, two, and three. But um, uh, yeah, I, I, that's on my and, and four now. So I got to read that. But uh, Chris Dysko, I picked that up for you in that Batman book too. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that once whenever I get a chance to finally get there. Bentley, Bentley's sleeping right now, but he's here. Come here, Bentley. Come here, Bentley. Buddy. Come here, puppy. We got you. Uh, Tori wants to see Bentley, so we're doing a Bentley camp thing right here. Here he is. Oh, that's it. There he is. Look up at the camera, buddy. Here you go. Here you go. Here's your good boy. Here's your good he looks boy. like a smushed um, face. Was a French bulldog. Yes, he, yes, he is a French bulldog, and he does have that smushed face. <laughs> I like when his ears pop up, when his ears like get up, and they just like they, they point up like that. But usually they're just. <coughs> you go, boy. 
Well, yeah, you're a good boy, Ben. We were just taking a nap together before I went on the air. And he was just like, he likes to cuddle a lot. So he'll get in, he'll get into bed and he'll just like, <laughs> he'll, he'll push himself, he'll push himself so far into me that he's literally pushing me off the bed. So now I use him as a buffer to keep myself on the bed. He sleeps on the end of the bed and just like keeps pushing me into the middle. <laughs> go ahead, go lay down, buddy. Good boy. All right, the next book we got here is Spawn number 350. Landmark issue 350. Can you believe that Todd McFarlane got so far with this series? I don't even know what it's about anymore, and everybody I talk to has no idea what's going on in any Spawn comic anymore. But that's not the point. I think the point is, is that for the people who are paying attention, they know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, I'm sure there's a starting point to where you can figure it out pretty quickly. I just haven't really taken the time to read Spawn books um, on a consistent basis. Like I picked up some Spawn books when um, he introduced Gunslinger and uh, all those other Spawn titles and all that stuff like that. I picked up just because I was interested in what he was doing there. But um, he still kept Spawn going. He's still going strong with this. They're releasing 351 in a couple weeks here. So we got Spawn 350 landmark issue. I'm going to do this today for just eight bucks. Eight bucks on Spawn 350. I believe that is the A cover. Benley Camp to you by Warline. <laughs> I got Power Rangers Unlimited number one, Hyperforce. This is going to go for 10 bucks. You like that book? Yeah? Hmm. All right, Power Rangers Unlimited number one, Hyperforce, $10 on this from Boom Studios. Next up, I got Marvel Team Up featuring Spider-Man and Iron Man number 145. This is going to go for just $4 right now. We got Symbiote Spidey and Iron Man up against Whiplash. That's interesting. $4 on this. Let's see who worked on this. I've been reading a lot of these Marvel team-ups lately. So we got Tony Isabella and Greg LaRocque on pencils. And look at the dynamic Spider-Man he, he's drawn on that page one. The anatomy is off. And I think that's intended because he's in motion. And you can feel that he's in motion right here with the art. So I actually really, I, I give severe props to that kind of exaggeration in comics because, you know, that's how you show motion in this still figure is by exaggerating the posture so that it's not what we would be used to seeing. Like no normal person can stand like this. It's because these figures are in motion. That's something that, um, you know, Will Eisner was uh, really good at conveying too because in a lot of his books, um, there isn't a lot of like fighting and, you know, big superhero battles. There's a lot of gesture. There's a lot of character. There's a lot of people in motion telling stories. And, you know, the way he shows all that in his art is really what made him like the godfather of sequential art. So when I see this kind of stuff in Marvel books, um, it's usually a lesson to me of like, you know, what, what makes for a good story. That's, I would say, one of the most important things is nice, loose, dramatic, fun art. Nice and loose can still mean dramatic and fun. It's what you want. This is four bucks. This is when you feel, and you know, this is something I'm going to say um, counter to AI. AI can't do that. You know, like the, the, panel to panel action to really tell a story on the page that is something that comes from within you know it can be replicated sure and it can look like a comic it can feel like a comic but is the story going to be great you know and this stuff with this these were human told stories they were fantastic i absolutely love marvel team up uh the next book we have here is justice league uh future zen number one this is a lenticular cover I've offered this many times. I'm trying to blow it out right now. I'm going to do it at just four bucks. Nice and easy, four dollars on this. And then next, I got Venom number twenty-five, landmark issue here. This is Legacy number two twenty-five. We're going to do this for four bucks right now. The cover price on this book, just so you guys know, is eight dollars. I'm just going to do it for four right now, so half off, fifty percent off cover. 
And then next up, I got Tap Dance Killer Number One by Ted Sakura and Hero Tomorrow Comics. These guys are making waves throughout the comic book industry right now. Um, and when I say guys, I mean like Ted and his team. But you know, Ted's really kind of the face of it, much like how I am for what I do with my comics. And he's doing just as many conventions as I am. He is growing uh, tremendously, and seeing his growth is. Um, really inspiring to me because it's also forcing me to grow too and it's showing me how far i've come as well you know and um we both are doing very different things but we're both you know growing within our respective areas and it's really a fantastic thing and he is he, he has become quite the showman if you ever see ted at shows you should definitely stop by and check out his booth um he's at wonder con right now i don't know exactly what booth he's at but if you guys are at that show, if someone pops in or has plans to go tomorrow, you can visit Ted and tell him I sent you. Um, he is at up, up, up. He's, he's only made videos. He hasn't really posted about it, but um, hang on a second. There's a Don Wen usually posts something here with everybody's locations for conventions. There we go. So Ted is at booth 1302 and they gave him a nice big spot this year. So you can go and check him out. But if you want tap dance killer in the meantime, we have the first ongoing for Nikki St. Clair. This is his main character. This is a really phenomenal book. I'm doing issue one today for just 10 bucks. This is out of print too. So this is kind of like a hard book to, to find now. Um, and if you really want this, throw me an offer. We might be able to make something work here. Let me know. I could even probably get Ted to sign it for you. I have uh, Street Fighter Legends number 4A. This is going to go for four bucks. Yes, Ted is awesome. What's up, Megan? How you doing? I'm going to be in uh, Denver next month for like a couple days, just like taking a little <laughs> vacation. My, um, my nephew's graduating from college. And so I decided I'm going to take like four days and just uh, run a car, do some hiking, you know, hang out for a little bit. So it'd be nice to meet up for like uh, coffee or something. Be good to see you. All right. Street Fighter goes to K-John. K-John, what's up, man? How you doing? It's been a little while. All right, next book we got here is Strange Academy number one. Strange Academy number one, or actually, sorry, Strange Academy presents number one. This is a tie-in with the death of Doctor Strange. Uh, this is going to go for just four bucks. Yeah, that's awesome, Megan. It's always good seeing friendly faces here, and I'm speaking to both Megan and Kay John here. So thank you guys for being here this afternoon. Always good seeing, you know, friendly faces on the show. Um, and if you haven't yet, be sure to, uh, uh, just so you guys know, we're in the running for uh, winning an, an award for Warline. So we're currently uh, one of eight books that are now being uh, considered for the uh, People's Choice Award. So you can vote over here for Warline 1 if you so choose, of course, you know. Um, but we also have a Kickstarter going live on uh, Tuesday. Um, and this is for a, a new edition of a book I published a couple of years ago called Marx, um, which is about my grandfather's life. My grandfather was a Russian Jewish soldier who fought the Nazis during World War II. Um, so if you can vote for us and also uh, click to be a part of Notified for our launch, that would be great. We're keeping it very simple with our uh, reward system for the campaign. Um, books are already being printed. Um, we're not doing any variants. There's none of that going on right now. Uh, there's only We only have copies of uh, a previous edition that was printed. It has a different cover, but um, it's you know what's left of that previous edition. But this new edition, we're just um, making a, one cover for it. It's being printed right now, and we should have it by uh, June. And when we have it in June, we will ship out right away. So what I'm planning on doing right now for all my Kickstarter campaigns is not only are we going to do shorter campaigns, we're going to do 20-day campaigns, but we're also going to do rapid 
uh, fulfillment on it. So as soon as everything's done, I will have all the inventory on hand. And that way we can take care of fulfillment quicker because I really don't want to just grow what I'm doing here or what I'm doing at conventions. I also want to grow what I'm doing on Kickstarter. And part of that is always starting with customer service. So making sure you guys get your stuff in a timely manner. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, K. John. You're awesome. All right. Uh, next book we got here is Star Wars number 34. This is a Carmine Infantino cover here, published in eight, uh, 1980. That, <laughs> that nine on the back looks like an eight. I was going to say 1880. Published in 1880, <laughs> before anyone knew what a Star or a Wars was. Um, this is going to go for $15. $15. And it's got a cover by Carmine Infantino, Star Wars number 34. Uh, this is a fine plus, I want to say. Maybe a VF. Um, and it's a newsstand edition. So fine plus VF on this is actually a pretty good deal. Uh, you know, it's pretty good. That's pretty good condition for a book this old. Can you imagine now 1980 was 44 years ago? Or 42 years ago? All right, I got you. So Justice League and Star Wars are off. Outstanding. Bentley is evading. He has left, he has left the building. All right, K. John, you're $1 uh, dollar away from a spin, just so you know. All right. Now up top. He has a spin. Huh? He has a spin, but we're gonna we're gonna do spins uh, later. He'll do our spins for us, okay? All right. Uh, we got a set of books here. I have David Finch's Batman: The Dark Knight. We got number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Now, when this book came out. DC decided to launch a new initiative, which was to draw the line at 299. And they did this because, you know, they were trying to fight inflation in all honesty. They were trying to say, look, we want to give you the best bang for your buck. And they were doing it at the time. And this book is the evidence of it. You know, they put David Finch on his own Batman story. Uh, they brought Atrigan Ad into it, which is really cool. Um, and I, if DC drew the line at $2.99, I'm going to draw the line at $2.99. We're going to do all five of these books for just 15 bucks right now. That's $3 a book. That first issue cover is really badass. I remember when this came out. This was a great book to have. And I saw a lot of people reselling it online for like between 5 and 10 bucks. Really great book. So I'm just going to do them all right now for 15 That's $3 a book, and you get the first five issues of... Batman the Dark Knight by David Finch. And then I got this uh, Prince Namor, the Submariner. Uh, this is a four-issue miniseries by Chuck Budinsky. And I really love these covers, too. I'm a, I'm a big uh, Submariner fan. I uh, read a lot of Submariner when I was uh, writing uh, the first issue of Warline because I was really trying to get uh, that voice down for the character. And the one thing I wanted to eliminate from the character's vocabulary was um, uh, unnecessarily foul language. So, um, you know, reading uh, Submariner really kind of like got me to understand how someone with uh, authority would speak. And also uh, someone with a sense of dignity, too. But, you know, I really like Namor. He's a complicated character. And not only is he the first you know, Marvel character to ever come into existence, you know, he's also got this really rich history and a really complicated story. I mean, he is the original uh, definition of what a Marvel character is. And I think that's why Stan Lee wanted him to be a part of the, um, to be carried over from all the stuff that was done back in the day. Uh, and it's, it's good stuff. I haven't read uh, this particular uh, Namor series, but I did read the Saga of the Submariner by uh, Roy Thomas, and that was like a 12-issue series. In all honesty, I bought this for me with the intent to read it. That was 
back in 2022. And I just realized it's now 2024 and I haven't read these books yet. Um, and they're just taking up space. And right now we got a lot going on. So I'd rather let these books go. Um, so here's what I'm willing to do on all of these. I'm going to do each one, or I'm just going to do all four for 15. But you got the whole run here. So this is all four parts. It's, it's here. It's 15 bucks. It's all yours. Okay. Let's keep moving here. All right. Oh, and then we got this Amazing Spider-Man set here. This is actually Mark Bagley's first uh, issue of Amazing Spider-Man. And then this is the second issue of Amazing Spider-Man. Um, from there, he went on to draw like 75 issues of Amazing and then he uh, illustrated like 100 plus issues of Ultimate Spider-Man. And then he went back to Spider-Man very recently with Dan Slott. And this guy has Spider-Man um, just, you know, <laughs> scorched into his brain. You know, he, he knows how to draw Spider-Man. But this is where it all begins. And honestly, I love his beginning work. I like a lot of his uh, 90s work um a lot it was actually um a big he was one of my favorite artists when uh you know i was you know kind of uh, growing up and i always wanted to meet him and i got to meet him a bunch of times and he's he's a super sweet guy he actually knows me now he's like oh you that nerd who's like you know slobbering all over me when i'm just trying to sign some books here that guy uh, but he, he's very he's very kind. He's a very he's a very good dude and, and incredibly talented. And his first issue of Spider Man, Spider Man and uh, Nova are fighting the Tri Sentinel. I mean, like that's epic. That's a really cool cover. And this one is too. I really like the focus on on this cover. Uh, Mark is a sensational artist. Mr. Dan Price is in the house. How you doing, Dan? Good to see you. So I'm going to do both of these tonight for 10 bucks as a set. So they're both going for five bucks a pop. This is Mark Bagley's first two issues of Spider-Man. It's also a completed storyline. So it's a two-part storyline. You got the whole thing here. Just 10 bucks. I'm going to uh, fill up those two slots on the bottom rack, and then we're off to $2 bill. $2 bill comics. I have Sensational She-Hulk number one. This is probably the most expensive book I have right now in my collection um, of bottom row books. All right, so here's me being completely honest with you guys, okay? This is me being fully candid with you. I am into this book for exactly $35. I picked this up at Beyond Tomorrow Comics along with another huge collection of books. So I'm into this book for $35. Initially, I wanted to sell it for $50 so that it could help pay off for the rest of that collection. Um, so far, I've been sitting on this for quite some time. So I've bought this book, I want to say March of last year, I think. It was around this time last year. So now this book's been sitting in my collection for a year, which means that me trying to sell it at $50 is not working, at least not here. The other option I have is I can list this on eBay and eventually it'll sell one day, maybe. Or I could sell it off right now for a slightly cheaper price and, you know, kind of see what I can make away with here. So my ask on this tonight is just going to be 40 bucks. You let me come out ahead just $5 and this is yours. $40 on Sensational She-Hulk, number one. I am desperate to move this book. <laughs> that is that is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I ain't got I, there's no story behind this or anything. Like this is the entire story right here. Plus, I read it because I was on a big John Byrne kick. I'm like, all right, I got this book. I might as well read it. And he really got a kick out of writing all that stuff. He he loved working on Sensational She Hulk. Uh, the condition on the She Hulk, I'm going to say it's a very fine. It's it's in good shape. New stand edition, too. Yeah, I'm going to say this is a very fine Heath. I don't know the exact condition because I'm not like a press and clean guy, but I know Roberto is, but he's based out in uh, Portland. But, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, we can 
All right, we got a claim on She-Hulk. Thank you, Heath. Good Lord, that She-Hulk's gone. You took the most expensive book out of my collection. You robbed me! No, you didn't. We both came out ahead on that. I appreciate it. Enjoy that book, my friend. Enjoy that book. All right, next up, Dan Price, since you're in the house, I figured I'd bring this book out here because you got a really funky book called uh, uh, Bigfoot Knows Karate. But here's another book that I have for the you know $5 crowd. Anybody who's a fan of Bigfoot Knows Karate may enjoy this book, or anybody who enjoys this book will definitely be a fan of Bigfoot Knows Karate. So we have Shirtless Bear Fighter number one. I am doing this for just four bucks right now for shirtless bear fighter number one. And then I have phage number one. This is part three of eight of extreme carnage. This is going to go for just $4 right now. Claim that sensational She-Hulk. Heath, how you doing, man? You have a good week? Got any big Easter plans? Does anybody else have Easter plans? Feel free to share them on, on the wall. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know what you're up to. Me and the boys have been hanging out at home a lot. We're playing Final Fantasy Rebirth. Alan's playing Spider-Man 2. And then we're all off doing our own thing. And Fortnite. And Fortnite, yes. Alan's also... Working on his reading and writing, and he's doing a really good job of that. Max is just chilling. So we're all just hanging out and having fun, being guys, doing the guy thing. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, we actually have a little family gathering, too. We're celebrating um, the fact that we're um, not celebrating Easter tomorrow because we're Jewish. Um, no, uh, I'm just getting together with my parents after this and bringing the kids. I want to see the kids. So um, we're just all going to have dinner. Lunch? Yes, we're going to go out after this. And then we got to come back and walk Bentley. These guys have been sitting around all day. So I every day I make them walk Bentley. We all go for a walk for about a mile and a half. It would be nice if we did something else, but these guys are just, you know, they just want to hang out at home. So I let them hang out at home. Yeah, you know what? I was like two thirds of the way through sixteen, and then um, I get I got sidetracked, and I actually think I lost all my save data, which sucks because I made so much progress. The combat in that game was very fluid, but I recently decided to start playing Final Fantasy Remake on PS Now because like I was paying for it anyway, and I'm like, all right, I'll go check it out. So I played all of. Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm like, this is so good. And then I picked up Rebirth, and I'm like, oh my god, this is even better. What they've done with that game is insane. I um, am just so excited for it. The, what they did with Remake was great. I thought, I was like, you know, that, there's maybe about like 10 to 20 hours of story in here. I look at the end of the game, I'm like, like 50 hours on this game. I mean, it was crazy. The battles were sick. They were so sick. And there was just like one after the other, and it's like, all right, Finally beat this guy. And now there's like this other big, huge monster thing, robot that like you got to fight and you, you can't even heal yourself up yet. It's like the challenge in those games are, is fantastic, but it's not so much to the point where like you want to give up and quit. It's like most of the time when I lost, I was like, all right, what do I need to do in order to win? And most of the time it was just like I had to upgrade my equipment or just change some settings around. But like here – in Rebirth, there's so much customization in this game. Like, you have a level party system, so you level up with the people who are in your party. And then, you know, there's uh, – you get, like, a fabricator, which is insane. Like, there's just so much stuff, and then there's so much nostalgia on top of it. It's it's really great, and it's been really inspiring to me uh, with what I'm working on with uh, the third issue of Warline. So I've been writing Warline 3 as this is going on. And just so you guys know, Warline 3 is now – uh, almost a quarter complete, which I'm really happy about. We're on page nine. Um, I'm probably going to get those page colored, uh, those pages colored soon. Um, and I'm going to use the same guy I had on issue two. So, um, and his work was just really sensational. Really good coloring. Yeah. 
you're watching me instead. That's exactly the point. It's like you could be playing that right now, yet you're here with me, of all people, <laughs> buying comics. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I'm telling you, that's what gets me out of bed every day. It's not about, hey, how much money did I make today? You know, like, uh, it's, it's because of the fact that I'm here for you guys that all that stuff will work itself out and has done so for 15 years. So, you know, I, sometimes you just got to have faith in yourself, but the reason why I have faith in myself is because you guys are actually here, butts and seats. So thank you. Appreciate that very, very much. I got Marvel two and one, the thing in the impossible man, number 60, that's going to go for four bucks. Four bucks on that. All right. Now we're going to $2 town. I'm going to bust out all new books. Lots of fun stuff here. So be on the lookout. And it also looks like I'm missing some people from my uh, my normal week crowd. So I'm going to bust out stuff that I had over at, that I acquired while I was at, um, what's it called? Uh, at the convention I was at in Indiana last weekend. Give you guys a crack at some of those books. Because this is all I got left of it too. And if I can move through all of this stuff, that will be amazing because that'll be like the fastest I've ever flipped the collection before. All right. First book we got is Web of Spider-Man 33. That's going to go for two bucks. The Batman 12 Cent Adventure is two dollars. I have a couple issues of Sleepwalker here. We have Sleepwalker number two, number three number five and number six sleepwalker is a pretty cool character uh this is gonna go for eight bucks i'm not necessarily sure if he needs like a tv show or any adaptation like that but um he's a cool character this kid falls asleep and he becomes a superhero known as sleepwalker and um while that kid is asleep that's when sleepwalker is out doing you know righting wrongs it's pretty it's pretty cool once the kid wakes up from his his dream, he loses his powers. He's got he's to sleep in order to have his powers. What a great concept. We're going to do all four of those books for $8. So he slept and then he his powers? Yep. Yep. And Sleepwalker's in love with Hellcat right now? I didn't know that. How can you not love Hellcat? She's 1-5, babe. I got Wonder Woman number 14 and number 15. I'm going to do these for just four bucks. So two and two, that's four. I have some Batman from Brian Azzarello here. We have Batman 623, 624, 625, and 626. That's going to go for just eight bucks right now. Eight bucks on the Batmans. I have Conan number 252, 256, and 269. This is all going to go for just five bucks. Five bucks right now on the Conans. These aren't in really great condition. So five bucks, they're all yours. Now I got some Snyder Batman here. I have Batman number 40, number 44. Number 45 and number 46. If you grab all of these books here, it is just $8. $8 on this set. I have the Batman Annual number 27. That's going to go for $2. Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider Man number 114. That is $2. Strange. This is from the Marvel Knights run. We got number one. And number two, that's going to go for four dollars, four bucks on the pair. I have Hellblazer number forty-five, number fifty-eight, and number sixty-two, and number sixty-three. Some really cool Glenn Fabry covers here. This is going to go for eight bucks, eight bucks on these. And be on the lookout. At the top of the hour, we're going to be doing FOMO books. And our FOMO books today are all foil books. They're foil editions of key comics. And they're the first edition of those foils. 
which doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be worth uh, as much money as the first printing, but they certainly are collector's items, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy them. So be on the lookout for that. All right. Deck from Spider-Man 114 is off to Keith. Very cool. Star Wars Shattered Empire number one is going to go for $2. Marvel Age Spider-Man. We have number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, and number ten. This is a big run of books here. We're missing issue nine, but we got one. Uh, at, you know, we're we're missing. Issue nine, but we have the others of one through ten. So there's nine comics here that would normally be eighteen dollars if they're all going for two a pop. I'm gonna just knock the price down to fifteen. So fifteen, you get all of these books here. James Patrick, awesome. Garcia, how you doing, man? It's good to see you. I uh, saw the news of your father. I, I my condolences. I'm really sorry for your loss. I didn't, don't want to bring it up here, but I just did. But anyway, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm sorry, man, and thank you for being here. And I hope you and your family are having a wonderful Easter. All right, I have Bullseye Greatest Hits, number one, number two, and number three. We're going to do all three of these books here for just six bucks. We got Steve Dillon on the art here. This is some fantastic stuff. I love uh, Bullseye getting his own series. He's, he's crazy, dude. He is absolutely crazy. And that's what makes the comic so entertaining is like, how much further is this, gonna, this guy going to go next? And um, I love Steve Dillon's take on, on Bullseye. He's just, he's just got such a look down for this character. Um, overall, I think Steve Dillon had a really good uh, – had a perfect way of showing off two kinds of people, very angry people and uh very crazy people <laughs> he was he was one of a kind i'm gonna go uh do all three of these for just six bucks oh well james patrick lost his father lost last uh august i was uh garcia another person who's watching the show right now he, he lost his father more recently but uh james i remember when your father passed away uh last year too i'm sorry for your loss man that's that's tough very very hard all right, I got the Batman Annual number one, number three, and two copies of the number four, which have a Sean Gordon Murphy cover here. Um, he's a very talented artist. And you got a story here by James Tynan IV, um, who is uh, doing uh, Something is Killing the Children. He's the creator of that. So um, you got a, a, good, a good story in, in store for you. Great story in store for you, for sure. <laughs> anyway, we're going to do all three books for six, but if you want the duplicate, it's eight. I have Batman number 545 and 546. That's going to go for four bucks. I have Daredevil 65 from the Marvel Knights series. That's going to go for two bucks. I have Hawkeye number one, missing number two, but I have number three, number four. Here's another variant to number four, and number five. If you decide you want to grab all of these Hawkeyes, it is two, four, five. I'll do all five for ten. All five for ten. Clean there, that little sixty-five. It's off to Keith. Keith, you're my man tonight. I have Cable, number one. Just so you guys know, this is like a anywhere between a $5 and $10 book. And it's a really cool cover, too. Um, uh, foil embossed cover. That's really cool. This is going to go for just $2. And then I have this one right here. I think this is the first ongoing, and this is a different two-parter two by John Romita Jr. 
Each one's going to go for two bucks. We got cable one and two going for just four. This is this is not a connecting set though, so I think you're going to need to get, uh, you know, the the next the next issue is a little different and and everything. I think. Mm. Wow, Dan Green is the anchor on this. I was actually going to have Dan Green uh, come on to illustrate. Marks at one point, he did this really great uh, Dr. Strange story with uh, J.M. DeMatteis called uh, uh, Enter Shambhala. In fact, I have it right here. Into Shambhala. I have never come across this book out in the wild, just so you guys know. But uh, Dan Green was the uh, artist on this, and he just did such a phenomenal job. But he mostly was making his money inking comics. Um, so, you know, he really didn't want to jump into sequential art. And I tried. I was praying I could get this guy to draw for me, and um, it just didn't work out, unfortunately. But, um, hey, he's done a lot of ink work. And I say anytime you look at uh, this guy, this guy's work, it's worth paying attention to because if you study his sequentials, he's just really fantastic. So just imagine how, you know, him applying all that to his inking. Really good stuff. All right. All right, the cables are going to James Patrick. Cool. All right, I got Spectacular Spider-Man number 11. This is the annual, and it's going to go for just two bucks. Two bucks on this. I have Supergirl 29. That's going to go for two bucks. Blackwood number two, that's $2. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I made some uh, – I started working out. Uh, with uh, uh, sort of like a, he's a chiropractor, but he also does like overall like health and stuff. And um, I've been in a lot of pain recently when I was exercising. So, uh, you know, I was discovering that I wasn't really doing the right exercises for me. So he's showing, he's just kind of coaching me and showing me some better exercises that I can do to uh, work on um, strengthening areas in my body so that I can continue doing conventions because I'm not getting any younger. So um, one of the things he's having me really work on is my core. So we're, we're working a lot with the core right now and my back so that I have the uh, ability to stay on my on my feet and everything. He's also showing me some like uh, stretches I can do. And what's happened is because when I'm standing so long at conventions, I've had a hip, my hip has been kind of misaligned. So he helped me like get that back in order, and that was like great. I had just slept that I hadn't slept so good in years after he did that for me. But yeah, like what typically tends to happen is um, my right uh, heel gets really tight at conventions and starts to you know make it really hard for me to walk. There are many mornings when I'm at a convention, like uh, you know, limping to my table. <laughs> it's happened many times. Um, and it still happens from time to time. Um, and the reason is because I'm literally on my feet for 10 hours a day slinging in comics. And um, when I'm on my feet, um, I am typically putting more weight on my left leg. So it created this misalignment in my hips. And, yeah, it was, it's crazy. You know, the things like you can take care of yourself, but sometimes you need someone to see outside of you to really, you know, tell you what's wrong and what's not working. So it's always a matter of finding those right, those right people though. Cause there's a lot of times when you uh, go and do things like that and you end up like getting charged a lot of money and things don't actually get better for you. They actually get kind of worse. So, you know, I've been through that myself. So I'm trying to like, just find some balance. I'm like Tom Petty. I was learning to fly, but I ain't got wings coming down. He's the hardest thing 
That's the best song. I love Tom Petty. And I miss Tom Petty, too. We were robbed. That guy was taken from us too soon. I love Tom Petty. He passed away? He did. He did. I don't even think he was 70 years old. All right. This big stack of comics here. Oh, my God. Jesus. This whole stack of comics here is Tom King Batman. All of this is Tom King Batman. And I think I have a, a total priced out at like 90 on all these books. So I'm doing them all for $75. This is a big run of Tom King Batman here. We got David Moore in the house. Yeah, where's my suit? <laughs> I just, I, I had, I've had my kids here, so I haven't had a chance to really get the suit thing in order. <laughs> Lots of other things going on. I have to start coming into work wearing a suit and tie now. That's so weird. That's what Alan says. It's weird. Why is it weird? Sometimes you have to dress like a, like an army commander. <laughs> And what is the spunky business? You got to instill order on your show. I think I should come in here with a military outfit on. Fatigues and everything. All right, drop it. Give me 20. <laughs> give me some money. Give, give me some money. Look at this kid. <laughs> You're crazy, dude. You are crazy, man. All right. Big stack of Tom King Batman here. I'm going to run through every single issue real quick. There is a lump sum total on this. I am not really interested in breaking this up. I would like to just sell it off as a big bundle. Um, actually, you know what? No, I am going to open it up. If people want to make claims on it, that's fine, because then I can just sell the bundle at, uh, for a cheaper price. So if you guys want to pick at this, I'm giving you full right to pick at this. And this is the first time I'm giving you rights to pick at this. So if you just need to plug in your run, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to do that right now. But just put down the bat Batman and number so if you're going to call any batman books just type in batman and get ready to you know write down the issue numbers so you can get that claim in if you want the lump sum the whole thing it's 90 dollars worth of books i'll drop the price down to 75 that will include free shipping and a spin on the wheel at the end of the show batman. all right so we got batman number one this is a dc universe uh reprint of issue one so what happened with this is on Batman Day, they re-released it, so that's that issue one. Um, we have issue 10, number 11, number 12, number 13, number 14, number 15, number 16, number 17, number 18, number 19, number 20, number 25, number 26, number 27, Number 28, number 29, number 30, number 31, number 32, number 33, number 34, we got 35, 36, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, that's a really sweet Tony Daniel cover, 47, 48, <laughs> I got a great story with this book. So I bought Overstock from a retailer once, and um, I had like 10 copies of this book. And I was at a con, and Tom King and Mitch Garretts were there, and I looked at this book, and I'm like, I'm going to turn this into a $15 comic right now. So I grabbed all my books, went over to Tom. I'm like, hey, Tom, can you uh, sign these books for me? He gave me a really good price on signing all of them. I've looked every last copy at $15. It was awesome. And, you know, it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't at the show and didn't know that Tom was there. Everything just perfectly aligned. And that's always how it works for me is whenever I get something that is signed, it's usually like kind of like a miracle thing. Um, when it comes back to me, like I'll usually reach out, like if someone reaches out to me and says, Hey, I want, you know, an artist to sign something, I'll do my best to, to arrange it. And David Moore, I'm sorry. We actually kind of let you down with, uh, getting Jim Starlin and Mark Bagley to sign stuff for you, but I'll work on something for you because, uh, one of his 
handlers is actually going to be staying with me during C2E2. So I'll speak with her about what we can arrange with uh, uh, either Jim or Mark. So I'll look into that. But anyway, this is really cool. We got 49, number 51, number 52, number 53, 54, 55, 57. We got a story here with uh, KG Beast. I'll get to FOMO as soon as I'm done with this. 58, or sorry, yeah. We got 56, which is a foil cover. Really cool. 58, 59, 60, 61, 62. We got Professor Pig on the cover. 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. We got a variant cover. 60, 70. We got a Frank Cho cover here for 71, 72, and 73. This is insane, the amount of Tom King Batman books we have here. Um, if you grab all of these Tom King Batman books, we're going to do it all at 75. If you want to make your claim for individual books, I will break up the set here. Um, obviously, I'd like to sell off the whole thing, and I think 75 is a good price on everything. That's a, that's a fair price. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it interesting. I'm going to make it interesting. Okay, three Conans are clean from a while ago. And then we're going to do our FOMO books right now. And Patrick, I'll let you know about the – I'll give you a first right of refusal on that Batman foil. There's a few of them right now, so you'll tell me which one you want and all that stuff. All right, it is FOMO time. And what's FOMO? Watch this video to find it's out. It's FOMO time! What's that even mean anyway? Oh, is that what it means? <laughs> I'm such a weenum for missing out on these great tales! <laughs> Don't be a wiener and miss out on these great deals. Alan's uh, putting his thumbs down. I'm doing the peewee sign when... Oh, that, the peewee sign? Yeah. He does a thumbs down? Yeah, he does a thumbs down. Okay, cool. All right, James, I'll start with the Batman since you're, you're, you want both of them. We have Batman number one. I'm going to do this one at 20. And then I have Batman and Batgirl, Detective Comics 411. That'll go for 15. So let me know if you want to grab these. That'll be 35 on the pair. Um, I have Wolverine number one. That's going to go for $20. Spectacular Spider-Man number one. This is a really cool foil. We're going to do this one at $15. I'm crying. Why, why are you crying right now? What are you crying about? Nothing. Nothing. All right. I have What If Venom. This is going to go for $15 as well. I have Ghost Rider Final Vengeance. This is going to go for 15. Amazing Spider-Man 252. That's going to go for 20. Okay. Oh, you want all the foil covers. Okay. So we got a claim on all of it. I'm going to cut you a deal then. Let me just ring up what all these are together as a total, and I'll cut you a deal on it. We'll do it right now. Um, but let me give uh, – we're going to let – James, I feel like I should let other people who want to claim these books individually go ahead, but I got you down on the Batmans, and if no one wants to claim any of these other books, I'll let you take the rest. Is that fair? I just want to give everybody a chance to get these books because claiming them or finding them takes a long time, and I want to make sure everybody walks off the show happy. No, I, I want to try and make a deal here for you. For Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So I will I will give you a good and, and here's what I'll do. Any foils that I'm left with that you want to just take afterwards, and I set aside the Batman's for you already because you specifically um, expressed interest in these. So these you're definitely got it at 35. And if we don't have any more claims on the rest of the foils after I'm done going through them, uh, I'll I'll give you a good deal on the rest of them. Okay. If you can if you could work with me here. All right. So K John, I'm going to give you this, the Ghost Rider Final Vengeance. Everybody's going to walk out of here a winner, I promise you. 
I got Amazing Spider-Man 252 for 20. And then I have Uncanny X-Men 268. That's also going to go for 20. So we have 1, 2, 3, going at 60. 15, 15, that's 30. So it's 90. Um, and then I have you down at 35 on these. So 90 plus 35. It'd be 125. All right. If no one claims any, if no one wants to claim any of these individual foil FOMO books between now and let's say the end of the show in an hour, uh, Robert, or sorry, uh, Patrick, or sorry, James, James Patrick, I will do all of the FOMO books for you at 100 right now. I'll take 25 off. Okay. You want to claim the Wolverine? All right. We got you on the Wolverine too. I mean, if no one else is claiming them, it's fine. I just want to make sure that, you know, we can we can get everybody. And also, uh, James, I might be able to get you another foil of the uh, Ghost Rider Final Vengeance. I think I saw another one floating around um, at, uh, at Peach Shop. So I can talk to him and see if we can get you another one of those. So we can we can probably make that one work at least. But that Wolverine, yeah, that one that one's a hard one to make work you know so i got so far james i have you on the batmans and the wolverine here so we got you in right now at uh, uh 40 and 15 so you're at 55 right now with with uh with those books and we'll, we'll save it for the end anybody else who wants to take yeah i got you i got you the i got both batmans are in there they're both in there. So there's four foil books left. We have Amazing Spider-Man 252, What If Venom, Spectacular Spider-Man number one. Um, the Venom and the Spider-Men are going for 15 apiece. The Uncanny X-Men 268, that's the Ghibli cover with Black Widow, Cap, and Wolverine. That one's going to go for 20. And then we have the Amazing Spider-Man 252 going at 20. So 20 and 20, 15 and 15. And if anybody uh, doesn't claim these by the end of the show, then James is taking them. So, and I'm going to give him a good deal on this. Yeah, you're awesome. Okay, we're going to go back. I'm so glad you guys love the foil FOMOs. That is so great. Thank you so much. That's great. I love collecting foils too, actually. I'm actually putting together a... Uh, Secret Wars 1 through 12 foil right now because Marvel's been re-releasing those as well. So um, I'm putting together a, a full set of 1 through 12, and eventually I'll probably uh, showcase it on, on the show. Maybe so I can go out and buy a Secret Wars 8. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. All right. I have Heroes for Hire, number 5. That's going to go for $2. The Unexpected, number 1, is $2. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, Black Science, number 17 and number 19. This is going to go for $4 as a set. A Walk Through Hell, number one, is $2. War for the Planet of the Apes, number four of four, is $2. The Wilds, number one, is $2. Weapon X, number two, and number 20. That's going to go for four bucks, four dollars on this set. The Unstoppable Wasp, number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. If you grab all of these, it's just ten dollars for the Unstoppable Wasp, number one through five. $10. Vibe number one is $2. Hmm. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that story with us, James. 
So James drove uh, to Jersey to get his uh, CGC uh, Transformers number two book, which was signed by Jim Shooter. It was signed at a 92, which is near mint. That's really cool. And he drove to Jersey to get it with uh, the number one from the movie and the number one from the series and slabs. That's really cool. All right. Thanks for sharing this story with us. I got I Hate Image. Uh, it's a free comic book day book, and it is done by Scotty Young. And this is some really wicked Scotty Young art on the cover. It's going to go for just two bucks. I hate image. Wow. You know, there's something uh, so interesting about this, like the fact that they have, you know, the cover itself is like, I can't believe they have the audacity to release a book where they say I hate image on the cover. And that's what that's what makes it appealing. You know, I that's what that's what draws you in for it. It's really cool. This is gonna go for two bucks. Very clever. I should make a comment called I hate fake salesmen. <laughs> Hashtag fake salesmen. <laughs> Criminal Macabre, uh, number one of four. And this is part of a different run here. It's called Criminal Macabre, a Cal McDonald mystery, number five. That's $2. So that's four bucks on this. I have Batman the Dark Knight. Oh, wow. We got those books right here. Number two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, wow. Got the whole run there. Uh, let's see. Well, since I this is in the $2 bin, it's $2, I guess. So this is your chance to get these books at a cheaper price. All right, so that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16. So that's uh, – I'll do all of these books at 15. So that's knocking the price down to two dollars. That's one, two, three, four, or sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, it's twelve dollars. My bad. It's twelve dollars on this. Twelve dollars on the Dark Knight run. But if you want to add that issue one, I'll do it for three bucks. I'll just throw all those books back in the two dollar bin. Let me know if you want to do it. That is David Finch's Batman. Lazarus issue one is going to go for two bucks. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad that the, the reseller gave you a good deal on that. I have Thor number 10, Thor number 11. That's going to go for four bucks. Four bucks on this. The Whistling Skull number one of six, that's two dollars. Scales and Scoundrels, number one, is $2. Yandu, number three, is $2. X-Men 189 is $2. X-Men 190 is $2. Number 193 is $2. You can get them all for just $6 right now. Spider-Woman, number 10, is $2. Aesop's Fables... Uh, from Fanagraphics, that's going to go for just two bucks. All right. Some good stuff coming your way. Found another Aesop's Fables. Here's number three going for two bucks. Matthew's playing by Heath. Okay. K Jones taking the dark next to number one. Sweet. You just got more for less. How awesome is that? Like, how good does that feel? This number one through five set was selling for 15. 
for the same price just now, he got issues uh, five, six, and seven, or sorry, six and seven tacked on at no additional cost. That's really great. Two, three. I'm just making sure it's a completed run. I want to make sure I, I, I do right by it. Yep, 15. There you go. Thank you very much. All right. So we still have Dark Knight number two, number three, number four, and number five. You guys did me rough here. We got all these at eight. Mighty Avengers 19, that's a cool Captain Marvel cover. Going for just two bucks. Outsiders number 20, two bucks. X-Men Curse of the Mutants. Got X-Men fighting vampires here. Number one, number two, we got Blade showing up. Some really cool Adi Granov covers. And number four, grab all three for six. All three for six. Aquaman number six is two bucks. Oh, that's really cool. Final Crisis, Legion of Three Worlds, number five of five. That's two dollars. Okay, that's there's a full board there. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give everybody one last pass at these foils, and if not, they're going off to uh, James here. He's already offered to take them all off my hands. So I have Amazing Spider-Man 252 going for twenty dollars. I have What If Venom going for uh, $15. Spectacular Spider-Man, that's going to go for $15. And then Uncanny X-Men 268, that's going to go for $20. If no one wants these books, I'm going to just give them off to James right now. So let me know if you want them. This is your last chance to jump on these foils before James takes them all from you. Don't say I didn't warn you. I have Captain America, number 36, number 37, number 38, number 39, and I'm going to do all four of these books for $8, $8 on this set. Detective Comics Annual, number two, is going to go for two bucks. Captain Marvel, number 12, is going to go for two bucks. Blackest Night, number two of eight, number three of eight, number five of eight, number six of eight, and number eight of eight. We're going to do all these books here. Two, four, five, ten dollars on this run. Black is like it's coming. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, James, it doesn't look like I have any claims here, so I'm going to run this. Uh, final tally for you. We'll give you a final price on everything. So we did 20 on this, and then 15 on that. 20. 15. Hey, can you not make those sounds, please? That's inappropriate. Thank you. Okay, James, yeah, I have about $130 worth of books here. I'm going to just knock 30 off. You're taking them all. It's 100 bucks. We got a deal. Thank you very, very much. You are fantastic. Yeah, that is an amazing Hell Jordan cover. I got Southern Bastards, number three. 
and number five, and number 17, and number 18. Uh, this is going to go for just $8, $8 on this run. Oh, I'm going to get another set here. Okay, I think you are close to the fifth one. Yeah, you're past 50, but if you want to take those uh, as well, feel free to do so. We got the two Thors at four, and then this one at four at the eight. Let me know if you want to throw them on. Uh, okay, John. Yeah, Kajon had some big pickups today for sure. So did Heath, by the way. All right, sure. Awesome. Have a great rest. Of Happy Easter, Kajon. Thanks for coming in, brother. That's awesome. All right. I have Magneto. This is a four part series here. We got number one. Number two, number three, and number four. This is going to go for just 20 bucks. 20 bucks on the run. And that's pretty much cover price on all these books. So $20. The total is 21, but it'd be 20. I'm pretty much into these all at retail. So 20 bucks for the run. It's like a full run. I wanted to read it. And then now I'm just letting it back out into the wild. So um, it's just 20 bucks for that run. Some good modern age goodness. The good stuff. All right, I got X Factor 86, that's gonna go for two bucks. And I have Century number one, that's gonna go for five dollars. All right, so now we got a double rack here. And I'm pretty happy with this double rack. Uh, I don't know if I want to, what I need to do. I want to do some, I want to take some stuff off of here and then I want to try and sell off the rest at like a bundle price because this stuff's just got to move now. Um, so I'm going to take off all these uh, Tom King Batmans here and I'm going to go through them and see what I can pick out of it that, you know, I might be able to do some, something else with, you know, no one wants the run. It's, a ninety dollars worth of books here that I'm doing for just seventy five. So it's it's a it's a drop in price here. But uh, if you decide to grab it, you know you got some comics here. You got a big stack of comics here. What else? This Star Wars Shattered Empire. Might bag and board that, give it some love. Do something with that. I got some Scott Snyder Batman. We have number 40, 44, 45, and 46. I don't know, I might be able to get like about four or five a pop on these, but I'll do them all right now at eight. 
Yeah, let's see. Do I see this standing there? Hello? Alright, nothing name? else. So I'm going to fill up the rest of the rack here and then see if we can sell off everything at a cheaper price. So I have Excalibur 35 and number 36. This is at 37, number 38, number 39, number 40. I'm going to do this entire run here. Two, four, six. We'll do all six at 12. All six for 12. Okay, there's Spider Man is off to heat. Did you just do a glitch? Yeah, look, he's just standing there. Mm -hmm. Doing nothing. Hmm. Looks like it is a glitch. <laughs> I have Fantastic Four 573, number 574, number 575, number 577, number 578, number 579, number 580, number 581, number 582, and number 583. It's two, four, six, eight, ten. I'll do all ten at fifteen dollars. All ten for fifteen. I have Inhumans, Once in Future Kings, number two. That's going to go for two bucks. X Factor eighty-five. That's going to go for two bucks. I have Infinite Hour Extreme number one. That's a cool book to have in your collection, going for just two bucks. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to do it now Now or never, right? It's now or never. Um, I guess I'm going to do this entire – oh, I'm going to take some notes off. This Marvel Age Spider-Man, I don't want to sell this off yet. Maybe I might come across a nine and I'll have a straight shot of one through ten. I can do for 20 bucks, but – you want to get all these right now? It's just 15 dollars $15 for all nine books. Set that off to the side there. Um, we'll replace it with these Aquamans. I have Aquaman number twenty-nine, number thirty, number thirty-one, and number thirty-two. This is going to go for eight bucks. Eight bucks on this run. So let's see, what can I do for this whole run here? I feel comfortable letting go of these books at $20 a rack. So if you give me $20, you can claim either rack. But if you give me $35, I'll give you everything on both racks. Save you some money. These are all books that I've been kind of showing off for a little while. You know, it's a chance for me to just move them, get rid of them. Make them somebody else's problem, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, let me know if you guys want to grab that, that entire run there. And let's see where we're at right now. I haven't, um, I haven't been checking stuff, but I want to see how I'm doing with, uh, how we're doing with the Kickstarter stuff. How many people have signed up so far? Usually I have more time, but I, I didn't with this campaign. All right, so we got 31 followers so far. So that's good. I'm happy with that. For the low amount of time I've had to really push that campaign, that's been that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right, so $35 on the double rack. Do I have any takers? This is a going once, going twice kind of a thing. Going once, going twice. All right. 
Not so, going once, going twice, not so. Now you guys get to see me rage, uh, you know, take down these books with rage in rage mode. Is that is that what we call it, Chris Dice? Rage mode takedowns. You guys are gonna see me with an angry look on my face right now. Look how angry I am. I'm angry you guys didn't jump on these deals. <laughs> All right. Okay, both racks are claimed at 35. Thank you very much, James. Well, now I got something to look forward to for you guys on Tuesday. We're going to go get a brand new collection of books. Probably go out and stock up over at Dreamland. Get a bunch of stuff from there. All these books are gone. No more rage selling. You guys went from seeing a sad Henri to a happy Henri. <laughs> and if they cast Finn Jones to be uh, Iron Fist again, I'm going to be a very sad Henri. <laughs> Henri Smash. Oh, well, yeah, that's definitely Henri Smash. Thanks to you guys. I appreciate that very much. Thank you, James. It's always good to see you, sir. James has been shopping with me for a long time now. All right. That is a lot of books sold on this show. I'm really happy about that. All right. These Batmans away. We'll start on a new rack. All right, this is the remainder of the new collection. Actually, no, this is like previous stuff. The remainder of the new collection still has some gems in it. It has a lot of gems in it, really. I pulled so much stuff. This guy was selling all these books for a dollar, and I was just finding one gem after another that was like worth like five to ten dollars. So I pulled a lot of those books to the side. Um, I ran out of bags, so I'm bagging and reporting them. And um, Everything's supposed to come next week, so I kind of put that project off to the side right now. But there are some really hot FOMO books I got coming your way, like, in the coming weeks. And I'm doing them. I'm not marking up higher I'm uh, by much. You know, I, I'm always marking up on books. But if I come across something that's, like, that I know is going for 5 to $10, um, I'll try and find some middle, middle ground price so I can come out ahead and you guys can save money still on it. So um, you guys will see all that stuff in the coming weeks here. But um, I think Monday or Tuesday, I'll probably go out to Dreamland Comics and build out a, a new collection. So if you guys are looking for anything new, just let me know. Yeah, so you got everything that was on the double racks, and then you got the other stuff that you had claimed. So we're starting, these are all new books now. Everything I'm about to show right now is stuff that has um, not been shown yet. Unless you want to throw on those Batmans at 60 bucks, the Tom King Bat, or sorry, $75 for the Tom King Batmans, let me know. That was that big, thick run of Batman. And then there was the Spider Man. And then there was the Scott Snyder Batman. I had a, Scott Snyder, a few issues of Scott Snyder Batman from like uh, 40s, 40, 42, 46, and 48, or something like that. That was like eight bucks. Let me know. If you want to see those Batman, just let me know. No, bottom stuff's not included. Um, I can give you a price on the bottom stuff if you want real quick. Why not? If anybody wants to take the bottom rack, I'm down to get rid of those too. Okay. Let's see, plus four, plus four. So I have $73 worth of books on the bottom row here. Uh, if you give me 60 bucks, we got a deal, you're saving $13. 
if you want to take the bottom row stuff, it's an extra 60 bucks. Let me know if you want to take that. All right, I got the death of Doctor Strange number four. No, no, that's a double rack. You got two big piles of comics right now. Here, I'll show you what you got. Take a picture of it here for you. That's your stack right there, dude. Those two stacks of comics. Okay, cool. No problem. All right, we have Death of Doctor Strange number four. That's going to go for two bucks. I have Squadron Supreme number three. That's two dollars. Batman and Robin number two from the New Fifty Two. That's two dollars. Uh, Cataclysm Ultimate Comics: The Ultimates number two. It's two bucks. X Men Blue number thirty-two is two dollars. I have Future State Superman of Metropolis number two. That's two dollars. Daredevil 89, 91, 92, 93, and number 105. This is going to go for just ten dollars. Ten dollars on the Daredevils. Green Lantern number two. Number three, that's going to go for $4. Terminator Secondary Objectives, number one of four, that's going to go for two bucks. Claws, number one of six, that's two dollars. Daredevil gets flamed. Got a Dark Claw one. Do I have a Dark Claw one? Let me check. I've had that book so many times. No. Fresh out, unfortunately. But if I come across one, I'll let you know. I've I've come across I come across that book fairly frequently. Jim Ballant, Dark Claw. It's a combination of Batman and Wolverine. All right, more Scott Snyder Batman. I got 49, 50. 51 and 52. If you grab all four of these books, it's $8. Eight bucks for that. Blue Ribbon Comics, number seven from Archie. That's going to go for two bucks. Dude on the cover looks like Black Panther. But he's the Blue Ribbon. You can't win them all. I have uh, Detective Comics 649 and 796. It's going to go for four bucks. Four bucks on this set. Kiss the End, number one, number two, and number three. That's going to go for six bucks. Six bucks. Conan the Barbarian, number 22, number 23, and number 24. I'm going to do all three for six. All three for six. I have Conan, a whole run of Conan here. This is Dark Horse Conan. Conan, 29, 31, 32, 33, 34, 36, 37, and 39. If you grab all of these books here, it is 2, 4, 6, 8. I'll do all 8 at 15. 8 comics at 15 bucks. Berserker number 1 is going to go for 2 bucks.
I have X Force Annual number one. This is Shatter Shot. That's going to go for two dollars. Scarlet Crush number one and number two. That's going to go for just four dollars. Four bucks on this. Infinity number three of six. That's going to go for two dollars. X Men Unlimited Green number one. That's two dollars. Future State Gotham 2, that's $2. And number 6 is $2. You get them both at 4. So 4 on this. Journey into Mystery, number 633. Number 634. Number 635. And number 636. I will do all four of these books for you at $8. $8 on the run. I have Deadpool team up number 886. He's with Iron Fist here. And then he's with Thor on 887. That's going to go for four bucks. Oh, remember that cable book we sold off? Here's the number one for it. We got it going for two bucks. John Romita Jr. Cable. Namor 18 is two bucks. Secret Avengers Fear Itself tie in number 13 is two dollars. Gremlin Trouble, book two, two dollars. Some weird, funky anime book. World War Hulk six oh nine is going to go for two bucks. Saga, 66 is $2. Deathstroke, 6 is $2. Fantastic Four, 548, 549, 550. We got Dwayne McDuffie on these books. 551, 552, 553. If you grab all of these books here, it is going to go for $12. $12 on all of these. Dwayne McDuffie, Fantastic Four. Furry love. What was the furry love? We have gremlin trouble. Oh, what am I missing here? Furry love. It's very love. I'm so lost right now. <laughs> My head is hurting. <laughs> is it the Berserker book? No, that's not a book. That can't be. That is a real furry. There's nothing furry about that book. <laughs> Don't know what it is, but looks cool. Chuck, how you doing, man? Good to see you. We're, we have in our presence Mr. Chuck Pino, who is uh, my uh, editor on Warline, and um, and Yusun Chin, and my good pal. You know, we're we're good we're good buds. We're always chatting and everything, and we're gonna chat tonight. Actually, I've been uh, we're about nine pages through with Warline 3 already, like nine pages have been illustrated, which I'm really happy about. And uh, I'm kind of, I, I showed Chuck a, a general outline for what I wanted to do with Warline 3. And, you know, we went back and forth on it and, you know, it's, it's now underway. And I'm kind of coming to each scene and kind of thinking about ways to, to strengthen stuff and make the make the storytelling better. So, you know, we're, we're coming up with some cool ideas and some fun things for Dexter to draw. And I look forward to you guys uh, having a chance to see how the series ends. We got uh, big plans for Warline. So thank you for being a part of it. And thank you for voting for it and getting us into the round eight. Chuck, how good does that feel? I mean, like, you know, 
uh, a book that you have edited and had a lot of input in has made it into the final eight. Like, remember when you were trying to help me figure out whether or not this book should even exist? You know, look how far we've come since that conversation. So congratulations to you, man. Like, I was that was something I want to tell you. If we don't get any further than this, um, what a what a what a tremendous honor! You know, an award an award uh, that started with 120 uh, different titles is now narrowed down to eight, and we're we're still in the running. So we'll find out by Monday if we make it into the final four. Um, I know I'm asking a lot from everybody, so every single time uh, we have a new ask, I drop in something cool and fun for you guys. Uh, you know, to make it more interesting and to give you guys a chance to, uh, you know have a reason to help me out with this thing. <laughs> All right. 64 meant nothing, but eight is cool. Yeah, I know, right? That's crazy. We beat out 56 other books. I mean, that's really crazy. You know, and I, I'm really confident we can, we can take this. Like, I really believe it. I think that the amount of work that we all put into this um, all the conversations that you and I had about the book um, over time, like, you know, even going to Emerald City Comic Con when we were, you know, Chuck and uh, another artist, uh, Doug, uh, Doug's, Doug, uh, last name, Brown or Smith? Doug Brown, I think. I think I'm wrong on both fronts. But anyway, Doug, he, he's the creator of another series. And I'm sorry, his name is uh, dropping from me right now. I suck. I'm just brain fart. Total brain fart. Yeah, Doug Brown. All right, thank you, Chuck. Yeah, these guys made a drive out to Seattle for Emerald City Comic Con, and I was kind of in a screwed situation with my um, with the place I was staying at. And Chuck and Doug, they welcomed me in to stay with them. I can't even remember Doug's last name. I'm such an asshole. But we got along very well. Doug's a great guy, and um, you've actually have seen his books on the show before. We have sold his uh, his his series, which Chuck edited. So these guys made the drive from Texas to Seattle. And um, this was in uh, the beginning stages of when we started first working with Dexter on Warline One. And Chuck and I were having a really epic conversation about um, how we wanted to portray a, a specific scene in the story, which was um, a training sequence to show how Warline's daughter, Kia, um, graduates to being like a, a warrior like her father. And so Chuck came up with this idea of, hey, we should just do like a, a whole thing where she's doing like the, the Katra. And so I went online and I spent hours like just piecing together something. And then we came up with, I showed it to Chuck and he's like, that's a really cool idea. So um, I'm really pleased with this. This is really cool. And Chuck, I, I believe you got the, we got you the original art for this too, right? I think, I hope. Let me know. But yeah, this was, I was really proud of this moment here. And, you know, to see that this book has now gotten to where it is, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And I really can't wait for you guys to read Warline 2 for everybody to get access to the, uh, to the second Warline book. It's, it's really, if you liked issue one, issue two is going to go in a completely insane direction. I think you guys are really going to love it. Issue two is the book that everybody's going to be talking about. We got number one right now in print form going for just five bucks. I'm knocking 50% off cover. So five bucks on more line one. Yes. Yes. Chuck has the original artwork and um, he is, he is very proud of that page. Yeah. And a lot of fun putting that together, making it dynamic. A lot of the fight scenes in the book um, I uh, choreographed because I really wanted specific actions for things like, especially in the second issue, there's like a sequence that I was, uh, I, I choreographed everything and I was really kind of doing the same thing that, you know, what I was talking about earlier with this, uh, Spider-Man Marvel team up. It's not that Dexter can't do a, a layout sequence. It's just that the poses that are exaggerated with some of these characters are like, these are not poses that people could stand in, but if they're in motion, they can, you know? So like, Again, I'm just going to show this book here real quick. If you just look at that page one and you see how Spider-Man's like, you know, like no one could be in that pose 
but it's a dramatic pose and it gets your attention. It's like, whoa, what you study the art and you're like, what the heck is going on here? Well, what's going on is Spider-Man's in motion. And this is how you take a still figure, which is just, you know, lines on paper and turn it into something that's um, in motion. You know, that's what sequential art is. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of telling the strongest story I can on the page. And, you know, it's really great to see uh, when Dexter can pull it together. But with some of the fight scenes, I, I, I really want to have like more of a, I want to play, I want to pay more attention to those. So sometimes I'll still kind of come in and, and do stuff. Um, but generally speaking, with these last uh, nine pages of Warline 3, like he's just been doing it on his own. It's been great. All right, we're taking Warline 1 at five bucks. We sold the Warline 1. Whoa, what a way. What a way to close out today's show. Warline 1 sells on the show. And don't forget, Marks is going on Kickstarter on Tuesday. So we're launching a new Kickstarter on Tuesday. I'm excited about this. Good times ahead. More line one for five bucks goes off to Mr. James Patrick. Here you go. Thank you very much, sir. And anybody else who wants that deal, just let me know. Five bucks on more line one. Got to move it. Selling Warline 1 on any one of my live streams is always a, 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 a good feeling. And Yisun Shin, too. And as far as Yisun Shin goes, I've been, uh, what's really been inspiring me to get my uh, ass in gear for, for Yisun Shin, and that's something that Chuck and I also need to start talking about, is like we're looking for someone to come on board to uh, help me finish, help us finish Yisun Shin, and then we're going to be moving forward with um, a second arc on Warline. So Warline is going to be a planned trilogy of books. And based on the reception that we're getting, the fact that our books is like, you know, in this running for a, a nomination, I can honestly tell you that regardless of anything, I'm going to make this, I'm going to see the story through to the end. We've already thought through what the sequel is going to be. And um, we're kind of piecing together the final chapter of, of what this story is going to look like. But Chuck and I had a really epic conversation last year about what's going to happen in the second arc of Warline. Um, and no hints yet, but it's, it's going to be great. You're, it, this is all just the beginning. <laughs> you know, this is, this is the start of it all. Yes, it is signed for you, sir. I did sign it just on the air right now. Uh, Chuck, that issue of Saga is number 66. That's going for just two bucks right now. I have Angelic, number three, number four, number five, and number six. That's going to go for just $8, $8 on this run. Dead Body Road, number three, is going to go for just $2. And so is number four. And so is number six. You get them all for six dollars. Six bucks and they're all yours. Black order number three is two dollars. Okay, cool. When it's all said and done, gang, there's no there's so much story. It's a mother load. Ha! Huh. I see what you did there, Chuck. I see what you did there. That was epic. <laughs> now, Chuck, uh, we had talked before. I had a Hulk 181 foil that you said you wanted to take uh, for me. I was going to do it for you at 15, and then we'd add that. That would be 17 for everything. Did you still want to do that? Just let me know. I remember we talked about it, but I just wanted to make sure I clarified that with you before. I, I'm, okay, yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah, that Hulk 181 is awesome. Don't know when I'll come across that again. Stormwatch number two is two bucks. We got Planet of the Symbiotes. Um, it's a pretty beat up copy, but I'm going to do it for two bucks. Rom Space Knight, number 29, two bucks on this. Number 51 is two bucks. We got X-Men, number 12, number 15, going for four as a set. 
X number seven is going to go for two bucks. Uh, Spider Man, the Power of Terror, number two of four. That's going to go for two bucks. And I have Star Wars Dark Droids, Dr. Afro, number 39, going for $2. And that's everything. Well, not everything, but everything I am going to showcase today. Because we are officially out of time now. I need to be out of here with the kids, like, right now, because we're meeting up with my parents for, uh, for dinner tonight. So... All right, here's my deal. If you guys take all these books off my hands right now, uh, I would do everything at 25 bucks. So that's everything on the double rack at 25. You're, they're missing a couple rows on the double rack, but I'll do it all at 25. Just let me know where you stand on that. We'll be on the air for another three minutes. You can make your submit your final claims. Rather than waste time, what I'll do is I'll showcase the bottom row of books again. So we're going to need to redress that anyway. I got Hell Number One. This is a lenticular book here. This is part of our FOMO that's going to go for four bucks. Parasite, number one, that's four. Brainiac, number one, that's four. Vampiverse, number one, that is five. Or sorry, I'll do four on that. Spider-Man, number one, that's a variant. That's going to go for four. Spawn, number 350, is eight. Power Rangers Unlimited, Hyperforce, number one, that is ten. The Sentry, number one, that is uh, five. Shirtless Bear Fighter, number one, that is four. Venom, number 25, that is four. Uh, Tap Dance Killer, number one, that is 10. Strange Academy Presents, number one, that is going to go for four. And then I have Phage, number one, that's going to go for four. And I have Marvel 2 and 1, number 60, that's going to go for four. If anybody wants to claim this stack of books here, it is just 60 bucks. And it's time for me to spin the wheel for a couple of you folks. I got Keith, K. John, and James. You guys all get a spin on the wheel. Let's take care of that real quick. Hang on just a second. It's time to spin the wheel of Skid Bark. All right, let's do it. I'm uh, spinning for Heath. Heath gets a free DC book. Uh, Heath, I'm going to hook you up with Deathstroke 6. And then spinning for K. John. K. John gets a free DC book as well. I'm going to give you Batman and Robin. And then finally for James. James is in here. Uh, James gets a free DC book too. Wow, everybody gets a free DC book today. What are the odds? What DC book am I going to give you? Um, let's see here. What would I, what should I give you? Oh, I had something here. Oh, okay. I'll do Future State, Superman, Man of Metropolis 2. That'll go off to you, James. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Happy Easter. I love you all. Have a great night. Take care.